So we're taking a pause. Has the market just run up too far, too fast on all of this hope of vaccines and stimulus? I think so. I think we've had an, a nice, nice rally, but I think the delays with the vaccine uh, have been troubling and I think disappointing. And I think it gives the market an excuse to take a pause. But this is just short term noise. We'll be back on track, I think, before we know it. You guys have been long term champions of value stocks. Has not worked out for, for a long time. Is starting to work now. Do, do you really think this is a, a sustainable rotation into value? And if so, for how long? Well, I think we deserve this rotation. You know, it's been a, a tough 12 years for value managers. Many value managers have gone out of business completely or people have retired early. Uh, other funds have found their assets being cut dramatically. So it's been a really, really rough time and it's time for the sun to shine on us value managers. Um, there's not many young up and coming value managers either, which is something kind of interesting. People are all following this growth mandate thinking this time it's different. When you hear, though, those terms that I've been seeing in more and more investment committees, that this time it's different, you want to own these magical growth stocks they are selling at these high multiples, that tells me those stocks are getting too expensive. The hot IPO market's really a sign that we're really getting really overwrought. And there are lots and lots of bargains in the value sector. Uh, our portfolios are extraordinarily well positioned to benefit. So even though I think growth stocks will have a tough, tough time, I think value stocks will make up the difference. And it'll last, we think, you know, at least three to four to five years. John, John maybe your stocks are cheap on a PE basis relative to some uh, other sectors, though they haven't really underperformed in the last couple of months. When you, when you see the likes of the banks today selling off so much, despite some uh, earnings beats on both the top and bottom line, do you, do you fear that they've run a little bit too much too quickly, even if you still like them for the long term? Well, I think it's just natural for there to be a correction. Uh, as you've suggested, they've run a long way. A uh, lot of over optimism. But eventually, as things settle down, you know, we'll get kind of back to equilibrium and then the banks will start to march hard higher. You know, my, my colleague Charlie Bobrinsko, as you know, is very much committed to a thesis that we believe in deeply at Ariel that higher interest rates are going to flow from higher inflation. And that's going to be uh, the stimulus is going to help inflation be higher than many, many, many people would have anticipated, which will force interest rates higher, which will be good for banks. Banks will do much, much better in a high interest rate environment. What's that, is that happening this year, John? And, and what's that going to mean for the rest of the market? Well, I think it's going to be a, a tale of two cities. I think that the undervalued, in particular the cyclical names, will do well with the stimulus, the infrastructure spending. As the economy strengthens, they'll come out of this cycle very, very strong. Their P multiples will hold up. Um, but the growth stocks are going to be hit because you get higher and higher interest rates. As we all know, companies that are dependent on future earnings to justify their current valuations, you're going to have the same ability to discount those future earnings with higher interest rates in the same way. So I think you'll see P.E. compression as rates go higher in the FANG stocks and the hot growth stocks that are selling at multiples that are way, way outside of the norm. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.